You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Corey Allen, and alongside my wife, Pam, each and every week. Love being here. We have conversations that help frame life and propel it forward into being more passionately married. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways we can do this, just a quick little plug, as some of our sponsors from the uh, Adventure Challenge with the connection cards. If I were a genre of music, what would I be and why? You would be smooth jazz. Oh. <laughs> and that's all for today's show. It's been <laughs> great to see. <laughs> that literally is the first genre that that's awesome. popped up for me about you for, for moments in life when I got you. You, you. You're usually fairly laid back, let things develop. Um, Anyway, well, these can, yeah. these are examples of the conversation starters that take place uh, with these connection cards from our friends at the Adventure Challenge. So, if you go to theadventurechallenge.com dot com and use our code SMR twenty, you get twenty percent off everything on the site. Mm -hmm. But you get a chance to pick up two decks of cards. I mean, they're all together as a package. Yeah. So the connection cards that are just couples, and then the embed edition. Another one was if you and I were to start a podcast, what would we name it? <laughs> That's one of the questions. That's one of the questions. I love it. Um, well, I got I, a couple of names in mind. You got a couple in mind. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> and one's going to, you know, one that everybody really well knows already. <laughs> Sexy Marriage Radio. Well, if you're new to the show, check out our starter facts, smrnation.com forward slash starter. It's a great way to introduce yourself or to other people to the show. Um, and if you got some feedback, let us know. 214-702-9565 or e email us at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. Well, coming up on today's regular free version of Sexy Marriage Radio uh, is a conversation I got to have with Clifford and Joyce Penner, who are pioneers in the Christian realm of sex therapy mm -hmm. and sex work and just sexology, if you mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. that they are the ones that are the forerunners of bringing up the topic in the Christian sphere. Mm -hmm. And... They've been doing this for a long, long time. And one of the things I love about this, babe, uh, this is brilliant. They've written a lot of different books. Yeah. Um, and one of the things they've done in their books that they've written to newlyweds on the importance of how sex plays out in marriage and mm -hmm. starting off well, their phone number is in the back. And if you're on your honeymoon and something's going haywire or wrong or you're not quite sure, call them. They love those phone calls, they said. <laughs> they still to this day get them. That's greatness. It is because it's a true service to people. Absolutely. Helping them out. And that so, can be really stressful. Absolutely. You, think it, you have expectations of what it's supposed to be like. Depending on your upbringing, for sure, that it, you could go in with all kinds of anxiety mm -hmm. on this subject. And so this is a great conversation of what have they seen over the course of their journey in the field. And then on the extended version today, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash smracademy. Um, we've been drip feeding and teasing out. There's some changes coming. One is on the platform that's already taken place mm -hmm. at my.smrnation.com. Um, there's just a reorganization of how things are presented mm -hmm. there, and there'll be new um, things we'll be adding uh, in the coming months and years just mm -hmm. to navigate better conversations for the people that are on the platform with us. And the other, we've just been kind of teasing out of a big change coming in 2023. Well, to those on the extended content today, you get to be among the first to hear exactly what we're doing. So all that's coming up on today's show. So it's fascinating to me that uh, Sexy Marriage Radio has been on the air for 10 years, but my guests today have been working in the field for far longer than that. They're pioneers in the world of uh, sex and sexuality uh, so Dr. Clifford and Joyce Penner are joining me today, and welcome you guys to the show. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you guys. Thank you. We're excited to be here. So uh, let's just start there. Um, you guys entered into this field, you just mentioned to me, Clifford, in 1975 was kind of when you That's started right. into this field. So how in the world did that happen as the pioneer people you guys are? Yes. And there weren't programs on like your program no. at that point, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, <laughs> yeah. The, it, it happened uh, without a plan. We might just say at least not our plan. Um, I was in practice as a clinical psychologist. I had gotten my doctorate uh, four years earlier and Joyce was a nursing professor at Cal State University. And um, 
I was asked to teach a group of young mothers about how to talk to your kids about sex. Okay. And psychologists get asked for these kind of topics. And I thought, well, I've got a six and an eight year old. Be good for me to learn something about that. So I gave my 45 minute talk. And afterwards, somebody came to me and said, you know, we have a group of 60 women that get together once a week and uh, we'd like you to come for a 10 week course on sexual adjustment in marriage. And I said, Basically said, I don't know anything about that. You yeah. said er- I said everything I knew in forty-five minutes. <laughs> right. I'm done. Two that's all. That's all I got. Weeks. Yeah, that's all I got. That's it. Yeah, but they they persisted, and so we um, uh, uh, because Joyce was a nursing professor in the medical field, uh, we taught that ten week course, two or three hours a week, for for ten weeks, and to our surprise. Mm-hmm. The women really responded. In fact, the last three weeks, they invited their spouses to come, and they talked about all the changes that happened as a result of that. Well, we have to say, we didn't just talk for two hours out of nothing. We studied everything we could find, all the information that was out there, and just prepared like crazy for every week and shared that information as best we knew it, not thinking it would ever go anywhere or make any difference. We just were kind of being obedient to what we were being called to do. So, Which so that's then, fabulous. Uh, then, yeah. then as a result of that, we started being asked to teach this to other places. And so then we decided to get educated in the field. So we went to Masters and Johnson and Helen Singer Kaplan and all the old leaders of mm-hmm. the day back then to get some education and and really be qualified for this, and then started doing sexual therapy. And uh, one of the interesting things that happened was we were speaking at, at CAPS, the Christian Association of Psychological Studies. We were doing a plenary address on teaching sexuality in the church, and the religions writer for the LA Times was there, and he wrote up an article called Sex Revolution in the Church. Well, there was no revolution. There was just what Cliff and Joyce were doing. This was summer 1976. So okay. it all happened so fast. We can never, you know, we almost can't believe it sometimes when we look back and say, this just kind of happened right. to us. We were just kind of pulled along. Right. And and the whole, the, the title though, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but the title is actually in that article is actually pretty appropriate because it was a revolution because no one was talking about it. And here That's you guys right. go talking about it. And so yeah. now we, all of a sudden revolutions start with one or two people. That's just the way they all are born out. Yeah. And then um, a few years earlier, uh, Tim and Beverly LeHay had written the Act of Marriage, which was based on a survey of their parishioners. And from a pastoral perspective. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that, that was in like 78 and then 79, Intended for Pleasure by Ed Wheat came out. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was written from a medical doctor perspective. Very prescriptive prescriptive, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, And those were published by Zondervan and Ravel, and uh, word books didn't want to be without a sex book, so they reached out to (laughs) somebody that we knew and said, do you have somebody? Because they wanted a book, and then we wrote The Gift of Sex. Yeah, And then we have to say, every step of the way, Cliff is very confident. I'm not very confident, so I'm saying, you know, I didn't get my degree to speak. I didn't get my right. degree to write books, but we were being used and it right. made a difference. And it's been so rewarding. And what's so interesting is Gift of Sex then came out our first book in 81. And every quarter when we get our royalty statements, that still sells more books than all of the others, all 10 of the others. Oh, yeah. Which is that, that was one of my first ones I was introduced to. Uh, right. Was was yeah, that book intended that. for pleasure? Was among it too. The, yeah. Those those were some yeah. of the first ones that I was ever the came three across. Basics that started. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm I'm fascinated by just the journey of of the longevity you guys have because there's there's a couple of things that, that that are worth noting on this because obviously um, mm-hmm. the field of marriage work, the field of sex work. Um, it's fraught with all kinds of struggle, right? Because one, you're just working with people that are in struggling and and right. hurting, and and it, it just can it can wear you out. <laughs> it can it can just exhaust you. And so I have to commend you right at the very beginning, guys, that um, 
I, I love the fact that you still do this, but I love the fact even more that you guys are still together doing this. Yeah. Because so many marriages and don't we still survive. Really it. enjoy it. Yes. Well, that's obvious. Just the times yeah. I've ever watched you speak, the times I've seen you on somebody else's show, um, it's 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 clear you guys enjoy what you do and each other. Yeah. And and what's interesting is we had thought we're both eighty now, and uh, so we had thought by this time no would be interested in hearing some old guys talk about sex, <laughs> but but they still are. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. And I'm, I'm, you guys have to be grateful that they are, right? That's right, for sure. And people, young people still call us and ask for help. And so rewarding. Uh, this is just jumping ahead. But but one of the fun things in our book, Intended for Pleasure. Intended for Pleasure? Not intended, no. Yeah, well, <laughs> getting your, that not that one. Uh, <laughs> getting your sex life off to a great start is for engaged couples preparing for a good sex life mm-hmm. in marriage. And in the honeymoon chapter, uh, right in the middle of it, we say, and if you run into trouble on your honeymoon, call us. And so regularly we still get calls from all over the world while people are on their honeymoon. That's fantastic. Uh, and, uh, and we deal with that as much as we can while they're there and helping them have as good a time as they can given whatever they're struggling with. Yeah. We were sharing this with uh, a friend at our grandson's wedding this summer. And the friend said, don't you ever kind of think, man, I wish we hadn't put that telephone number in there. Don't you ever get <laughs> kind of annoyed with it? And no, yeah, it just feels like so often five minutes, 10 minutes is going to make a difference in this couple's life mm-hmm. for the rest of their marriage. And it's energizing. Mm-hmm. It's rewarding. It really feels like we're making a difference. Yeah, because there's valuable. there's so many people that have had the experience of a disaster in some regards when it comes yes. to their their wedding night and their honeymoon, and it's just like, and it just sets them on a course that until they right. finally get the word of you know what, yes, there's going to be struggle. Yes, there's awkwardness. Yes, you may not know what you're doing. Yes, it's not going to you know. And once you can normalize some of those things, and if you can do it early with you guys' phone number, then that helps them jumpstart the process even faster. Yes, and we just, basically the message we give, we deal with whatever the problem is rather quickly and then say we got to, we can do something specific about this when you get home from your honeymoon. But for right now, just enjoy every moment that you have of getting to know each other sexually. And if this part doesn't work, don't bother with it. Mm-hmm. Just enjoy what you can enjoy mm-hmm. Which, and have lots of fun. That's kind of good counsel for any part of life right there. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. But I jumped way ahead by using that example. Yeah. But but thing, things got started um, early on. And then, and then we've just done marriage seminars. And then lately, as we're getting older, we do a lot more training of other therapists mm-hmm. in terms of how to deal with sexual issues. That's, yeah. that's been a big part of our life in the last few years. That's great. Tis the season to be smooth or trimmed, whichever is your preference this holiday season. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear the driveway downstairs for safe travels this holiday season. For stocking stuffers to white elephant gifts, Manscaped's products should be at the top of everyone's wish list. So grab something for your pops, your son, even your wife, because let's face it, fellas, some of the tools that are so good for men... Work on women, too. Well, this December, go to manscaped.com, use our code SMR, and get 20% off plus free shipping. We have spoken regularly about the Platinum Package 4.0, plus loads of little presents that go alongside it with for great stocking stuffers. What better holiday gift than to give the gift of good hygiene and maybe even a few laughs? Because Manscaped, let's face it, they're creative with their wording. They offer a handful of liquid formulations from shampoos to body washes, upstairs and downstairs deodorants, absolutely everything you could need to keep it clean. You can also pick up the Shears 2.0. It's their full kit for nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for a traveling man. Get 20% off plus free shipping with our code SMR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com if you use our code SMR, manscaped. A perfect gift for the holiday's biggest hit. So I, I am curious. There's two, there's two things I would love to, to talk with you guys and explore more. One, 
One is the idea of because of the longevity you guys have had on this subject in this in this field of working with people. Um, what are some of the changes that have stood out to you as as time has gone on? Because you guys would be privy to uh, being ones that are the first ones talking about this in an open forum, um, and there there's something that can come with this. And then there's also as you've aged and and continue doing this, you have a different <clears throat> insight into what's going right. on. Yeah, there are a bunch of things. So why don't you start, George? Right. Well, the positive. Uh, that change that we've seen is that programs like yours and so much more information is available so that people do have resources. They do have places to go. They have heard a positive view of sexuality from uh, a biblical perspective, Mm -hmm. from a faith-based perspective, and it isn't loaded with all the shame and guilt and confusion. So not as much. There still are those there places. Still are sure. those places, but so much more available. The negative is that we're experience women are experiencing there's so much more frequency of pain than there was. Right. Physical Heart, pain. Right. Physical pain, and that's based mainly on hormonal issues. Okay. Which we don't need to get into that much, which is basically so many of the hormonal Uh, birth control methods had to change as a result of the fear of high estrogen. And so we work a lot with women on that and finding, and we just really encourage women uh, when they're getting started, if they're needing birth control, feel free to call us, feel free to get help in finding what will work best for you without triggering pain. And then the other thing that's huge. And we should just pause there a moment and say, and it's real pain. We're not Absolutely. talking about no. something in their head. Right. We always say it's not in your head, it's in your vagina. That's where the pain is. Right. And I was actually just talking to someone yesterday who's just preparing for marriage and saying, well, it, it it's supposed to hurt, isn't it? Right. And I said, well, no, not really. It's like, ouch, you know, that kind of hurt, but not gritting your teeth and yeah. holding onto the side of the bed and making it happen. It isn't that kind of pain. Right. And it shouldn't hurt like that. And that's what the expectation that it's okay to have, it's okay if it hurts, it's expected to hurt. That will not do well for a couple long-term. Right. And and we really encourage them not to engage in any activity that's causing pain until they get help and get relief from that. Then the big thing is pornography. Yeah. Let's talk about that a minute because when, when we started 47 years ago, if you wanted pornography, you had to either go buy a sleazy magazine or go to that part of town where you could yep. watch videos or whatever. But It but took you, effort. You yeah. had to really go, uh, be intentional and hope no one was seeing you and pull your cap down over your eyes and right. all that stuff. Now everybody That's walks around with a billion porn sites in their pocket with the telephone. And every... Right young person at such a young age and it comes up totally unexpectedly they don't have to be looking for it and it's going to what we try to teach them it's going to trigger their curiosity it is natural to be curious about sex and and trigger feelings inside their body that's the way we're wired Mm -hmm. but learning that that is not what sex really is in marriage and so they're the they're the young people that, that get at the kids, but then it's massively affecting marriages as well, where guys are stuck on it, and everyone thinks that that when they get married they won't need to look at porn anymore because they'll have a wife, right? And that lasts, on, you know, six months into the marriage when she's having her period or she's out of town or she's in a bad mood or whatever, and and all of a sudden the porn is calling again. And people are right back into it. And so dealing with it, whether it's with the adolescents or with in marriage and also with women who have gotten into it these Mm -hmm. days, not just men. And just basically to summarize, it's the image of what it should be like that impacts the married sex life negatively. Right. Right. Yeah, because that's that whole uh, vicious 
expectation levels get set and then now all of a sudden I'm comparing it against something that's virtual, which is totally impossible to recreate in real life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's so much destruction that comes from it. It's expecting that newness energy, that intense, um, that long-term sex and marriage is much more about softness, closeness, bonding, intimacy, becoming one in that real sense of uniting all of our worlds. Alan Short of UCLA talks about excited love and quiet love. Okay. And uh, that's a that's a good way to differentiate that that passionate, early, new yep. excitement that's there. And, and in any relationship, after a while, it has to shift to the quiet, committed, uh, deep relationship right. kind of love. And making that shift is often hard for people who are continually revving themselves up with the excitement of new porn. Because you can have a new partner in porn every day. Well, and then so many times another consequence of that is we find that the person who was into porn, more likely the husband, but now it's women also, then want their partner, their spouse, to do what they saw in porn, thinking that that will cause them to have those same feelings. And then the person, the spouse feels like an object rather than a partner. And it's not about intimacy. Right. Yeah. Cause it's not involving the people and the uniqueness of it. That's and right. then that's also, I'm assuming you guys have seen the thread yeah. of um, as far as men that were uh, exposed to high speed internet porn and consumed quite a bit. Now all of a sudden in early ages are having erectile difficulties, ejaculation yes. difficulties. Yes. And it's because they can't get that novelty or that, that edge right. or that whatever it is, because no human being can ever compete with what's on the screen. With the, that. Yeah. Cause, it, Cause it's fake. It's yeah. not real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Cliff, yeah, what we, stands out to you over the course of what, what, what jumps out to you from this journey you've had? Thus far, do you have anything that's different than than your wife? Well, what do, what do you mean by that? No, he's talking about the the, the we talked about the pain oh, and and, and, the, porn. and the porn issue. Um, I think, uh, well, the the porn issue is giant in terms of dealing with men, so mm-hmm. that that's an obvious one. Um, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra have radically changed the scene also because it used, mm-hmm. it used to be when I was at Masters and Johnson, Bill Masters talked about, he called it back then, we called it impotence right. or the impotent man. We don't do that anymore. That's not PC. Now we talk about erectile dysfunction, but um, uh, so it's not about the person. Um, but he talked about the fact that when there was erectile dysfunction, 85% of the time it was psychological and 15% of the time it was biological or medical. Mm-hmm. Or organic. Mm-hmm. The research has now shown that it's almost exactly the opposite. About 85% of the time these days, there is some kind of physical medical basis for the erectile problem. And, and then it can have an effect on your emotional and psychological, sure. but it starts with the medical. And that's been one of the big radical shifts in o- our treatment over yeah. the time. Okay. And then, and, and then you add the, the, the Viagra's and, and oh, that's brought in a new issue because a lot of times couples had gotten to the place where they were just sad, not satisfied, but accepting the fact that they were 65 years old and they couldn't do it anymore. And uh, and now all of a sudden they can. And so now you have a new problem because the wife has adapted to the idea that we're not going to do this anymore. And now all of a sudden the little blue pill comes along and now he wants to do it and she has to make those adjustments. Right. So that's been another change that's happened right. over time. Yeah, but that's just to, oh. on the if for the listeners on the erectile dysfunction, if a man is struggling with that. We really, really encourage him first to go for medical help yeah. and make sure that everything is working medically. And usually most physicians will say, you know, you really need to see a male sexual dysfunction specialist or urologist urologist, or someone for that. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's always good counsel across the board when we're talking about anything right. of our 
interacting interpersonally um, across the board because there can be components of it that it's biological, but then there's also right. could be a component of it that it's a it's a mental, it's an emotional, it's a spiritual, Absolutely. it's something. And so mm-hmm. check them all out because that yes. that way you're making sure you know what you're really facing. Yes. Yeah. So that has been been one of the big changes over time. Mm-hmm. That's that's fascinating because just thinking about how um, the the medical science and what's what's evolved with it, coupled with the fact that we live longer too yes. as as a species than than ever in history. Um, so it is one of those like okay, so this can be a component of my life for the long term. But I love the fact that you're pointing out. So men can see it as, hey, sweet. And then she's like, but hold on. I was kind of comfortable not having to get caught up with all that again. And now I got right, to. What right, are you talking about here? Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, and another thing that was has been so affirming to us is there were different things that we were teaching based on our clinical observations and experience. And when the sex and the brain research came out, it showed why that worked. And that one of those is our formula for intimacy that you may be familiar with or may not be well, familiar with. Well, catch people with, up with it. You're, you're teeing it up perfectly, Joyce. So let's, let's catch people up with it if they're not familiar with it. Yes. Yes. So the formula for intimacy, it's just a little card. You can buy it on our website or we can send it to you or we can send it via, you know, email, however, but it's basically, and it is very prescriptive. It's very much more like a medical Uh, prescription because we found out that the reason it works is because of what happens in the brain. So let's explain what it is. It's, it's 15 minutes a day, one day, one, one time a week. uh, This isn't to to be together. This is to build the connection and the intimacy that will keep you connected sexually. Okay. And when we talk about sex, we're talking broad here. Yes. You know, and when you're 80, it may not be like it was when you were 40 or 20. Right. And so, and we're 80. So, but that doesn't mean you can't have that intimate, wonderful connection. Mm -hmm. But if we think of only getting the two bodies together as sex, what is that? I don't know. Keep going. Okay. Uh, Then that can be, a false expectation. Right. And if that isn't working when you're 80, then you may think, oh, it's all done. We just, you know, sleep in right. our separate beds, go to separate rooms, whatever. It doesn't have to be that way. But that's what the sex and the brain research, research has shown. So let's and just talk about, about that 15 minutes in particular. That's because the most important. Okay. Because we say we need to have <clears throat> a 15 minutes a day of connection every single day. Okay. And that involves face, is- face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact, where you're having uh, some kind of connection, uh, an affirmation. a Just sharing something positive. It isn't working out your plan for the day. It's it not going to who's pick up the kids right. from soccer. It's not, logistics, it it's not logistical training and night. stuff. Right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And, and it may be that you're still tense with each other about mm-hmm. the fights. And now how do we look at each other and say something affirming? but it kind of forces the issue and it can be something, it doesn't even have to be affirming of the other person. It can be, but it can be a positive thought you had or something you read or so, something. But that basically happened in an, family. an emotional face-to-face eye to connection. And then we like to shift to, well, let's say why the eye to eye. Okay. When we look in each other's eyes, our brain, and this we didn't know until the research came out, our brain gives us a shot of oxytocin. Mm-hmm. That's why a mother and father should look into the young baby because it builds the bonding and the intimacy. So that keeps us connected at that deep, soft, quiet love level. Mm-hmm. And then the next one, wherever they are in their spiritual journey, bringing that spirituality into their relationship. And that could be just a, a verse. It could be a couple's devotional. It could be a thought, a prayer, whatever. Where Everybody's a little bit different yeah. on where they are in that yeah. journey, but some spiritual connection. So the eye to eye emotional, then the spiritual, and then finally the physical. And the physical should start with standing up and giving a full front to front body hug for 20 seconds and set that timer for 20 seconds when you first start doing it, because you'll be surprised how mm-hmm. long that is. 
and really get into it and enjoy it. Because a 20 second hug has the same effect as looking in the eyes. It raises the oxytocin level. It's measurable mm -hmm. chemically. And even the, even the hug is even more powerful than the eye to eye. And then for some people who have, have trouble kissing, and in some cultures we've particularly experienced or heard this reported, uh, th this may not work, but it helps if you've had the hug first. But the passionate kissing without leading to sex. Yeah, right? and what we say there is a, a 5 to 30 second passionate kiss that is an end in itself, right? Not, not, and then you're promising we're going to have sex later on, or hoping to, or anything else. Because but it's kind of like, uh, you know, really having a wonderful kiss at, at the end of the wedding ceremony when you now you can kiss the bride, you know, right. get into it and really kiss. Right. But they're not going to then r quickly run away to the bedroom and have sex. They're going to have their reception and all that kind of thing right that's what we're talking about really get into it and kiss now for people who haven't been able to kiss we say start with just lip to lip peck mm -hmm. and take it gradual and the person who has the difficulty that person should lead so the never the person with the difficulty never feels like it's getting pushed on them okay so how much they get into it will depend on that person who maybe came with some trauma with kissing or has had some bad experience or just has some cultural training that makes it hard for them. But the important thing here is that the passionate kissing actually kicks off the dopamine response in that the body. That keeps that, that little spark That, that excitement yep. phase going. Even after almost 60 years of marriage, you can get a little bit of that. <laughs> So <laughs> that's good. That's good news to hear. So <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, so, but so it is. It is the eye to eye contact. It is the body to body contact that raises the oxytocin level, mm -hmm. and then it is also the the passionate connection that raises the dopamine level. And all of this is based on the new research that has come here this is still answering your question what's new yeah the new research that's come out about sex in the brain and and how much all of that is connected for us and uh, we were recommending these kind of things long before the research came out but the research really confirmed what we had been recommending and solidified it so we could produce it in something tangible that we can pass on. Right. That's nice to get confirmation of what you're doing is spot on as things evolve, yeah. right? That's that's a very exactly. good thing. Well, very so so it's 15 minutes a day connection, one day a week. And that one day a week, uh, that one evening a week or afternoon a week, it it is really a, a time to to be connected with each other. Often that can lead to a sexual experience. Okay. But it doesn't necessarily have to. Okay, but it's it's but an intentional time, time set aside for it. Yeah, taking we time. We talk about a date night or however you want to call it. Gotcha. And we have uh, pleasuring, learning to touch and give and receive touch and pleasure in our book, restoring the pleasure and using something like that to do these different exercises, whether it's a foot caress, a hand caress, a back caress, mm -hmm. a face, a total body, uh, breast and genitals, you know, whatever. And people say, well, what, would, what if we're not in the mood? That's one of the issues in today's world, particularly, is that we feel like we have to be in the mood to be able to have sex. Right. And this yes. is where we differentiate between initiating a sexual experience out of desire, which we all want. If we both desire it, it's easy to initiate, mm -hmm. or initiating it by decision. Mm -hmm. That is, um, we know that it's best for us if we're together connected once a week so um and it, so let's plan to get together tonight not because we are feeling turned on mm -hmm. but because we've decided that that's what what's best and that's what we're going to do and then get turned on in the experience itself and, and if we don't it's fine just having that time has been great right. so but it allows for it because in our world it just if we don't set aside that time particularly once we have kids in the house and families with children, you know, and it's particularly when, when they're little, it's hard. And then again, when they're adolescents, they go to sleep later than we do. 
And when do we get our time? Right. And it's good for kids to know that mom and dad take time for themselves. It's really comforting. We always, um, we typically did Friday noon, our kids would have activities after school and we had a, you know, being therapists, we mm-hmm. could schedule our time and we would take off Fridays or Friday noon. Yeah. And remember at one point, our son saying something about, you guys aren't taking your Friday time for each other. Is everything okay? And I think <laughs> friends of his were going, parents were going through a divorce and it made him a little nervous. And yeah. we never even thought he noticed that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just good for kids to know that mom and dad take time for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. It sets, it sets a great foundation for the relationship and for the family, for, for the community. Yeah. Even. I mean, we can go beyond that, right? Just because it makes things right. much more stable for everybody. Yeah. And not in a hurtful way, you know, if no. a child's had an accident or is crying or needing their help. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. It's Friday after. It's Friday no, no, noon. No, we're not I can't, saying. I can't help you. <laughs> No, no, I no I'm sorry. It's our time, I, not in a selfish way. Although we had a, our, our oldest daughter, who's now a clinical psychologist herself, but she, she could be a little dramatic at times. And so I said, you know, um, don't call unless you see you see flames, not just smoke. Right. <laughs> you know, and you see a hand coming in the window, not just that you're afraid there's somebody out there. Right. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Well, I'm so grateful for uh, you guys being a pioneer uh, of this and the chance to connect. We've crossed paths a couple different times at AACC or some different things, oh, but sure. it's fantastic to to actually spend some time with you. And I'd love it if you'd let the uh, the listeners know, how do they find you? Where where do they need to go to find you and find more? Well, that's the, the simple way is our website, passionatecommitment.com. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we have uh, all our, our resources there, uh, frequently asked questions, all that kind of thing. That's the easiest way. The other one is just call our offices at 626-449-2525. Perfect. We're, we're still um, available. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then Joyce mainly these days um, handles all our emails. We, we literally get emails every day. With asking for help, asking mm-hmm. for help from, I mean, just yesterday got one from Hungary. Okay. Um, Cause one of our books was translated into Hungarian. Cool. And uh, so um, those come from all over the world. And that's what Joyce does um, in terms of responding. That's a, that's a, a free service. That's, that's not awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. charged. Well, and you so, guys, you guys are a blessing to a lot of people. Uh, including myself. So thank you so much. And thank you for the time today on the show. Okay. Well, it's been fun. Yeah. Hope, thank hope we you can for do what you're again. doing. We're Absolutely. so glad other people are taking this on. Thanks. So as we're winding down the year, Pam, I mean, that's crazy to think. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> There's only, only two episodes left after this one in the year. That Where is it gone? I mean, there's a lot of things coming up that will be changing in everybody's world with new seasons. You know, some people way up north, there in the midst of it's just major cold and snowy and they got to dig themselves out and they're just ready for the sun again. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's so great to be on this journey with everybody and to be on this journey with you. Mm, I love and being on this if with you. If you were a part of the extended content, you got a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming next. Mm-hmm. If you didn't catch that, you're going to want to join us and that way you can be among the first to know <laughs> what's happening in 2023. Transcripts are available in the show notes on each of the episode's pages. All our advertisers, deals, and discount codes are also on each of the episode's pages at smrnation.com. Please consider supporting those who support the show. Greatest compliment you can give us is to share the show with those that you care about. And those of you that were in the extended content, share what's coming. It's okay. The cat's out the bag. You know. (laughs) Spread the word. So wherever you are, whatever you've been doing, thanks for taking some time out to spend a little bit of time with us this holiday season. We'll see you next time.